Hopefully nobody's home. I hope we're not bothering anyone. Should we go inside? That's it. it. My name is Jared Gross, and I've been traveling far and wide in search of the world's most interesting 3D printed buildings. Today, we'll lay out some of the pros and cons of this build while inside the beautiful Ashen Cabin. After spending the morning searching all around the Arnott Forest, we ran into a couple hikers who gave us a tip that we could search in Ithaca, maybe have a little bit better luck. So through some internet researching and CIA level investigation, we've made our way here to the Ashen Cabin. Check it out here, they've put a little bit of 3D printed concrete, left it on the ground. Oh, you can see the leftover gravel from the inside. This means that they were filling up the print with gravel as they were printing it so the next layers could be overhung. Wow, here it is. They use that same strategy to print these triangular upside down pyramids. So they print them upside down and fill them with gravel. That way they're able to layer it and get kind of an overhang. Inside. That's it. it. Wow. Seems kind of lived in. They have this fireplace that's being actively used. This is a really awesome space. It's so unique the way that all the wood is totally organic and they didn't reform the shape at all. This sink has an overhang, which shows the real drastic possibilities for printed construction. You might think 3D printing, you can't do an angle like that. However, by printing it upside down or reorienting the object, you're able to achieve shapes and designs that are kind of hard to conceptualize. There are infinite possibilities for printed concrete, and they're only just beginning to explore where this technology will take us. By bringing it together with other cutting edge technologies, especially when people have sustainability and reusability in mind, it becomes a very, very powerful tool for custom applications. Recent tragedy has struck this region in the form of the emerald ash borer beetle. This beetle lays its eggs in the bark of this wood here and ultimately it kills the trees. So these trees, because of their unique shape, can't be cut down into regular 2x4 lumber that could be used for construction. Cornell used robotic arms to slice about maybe 3 quarter inch segments from the wood, all from the same logs. Because they're sliced from the same logs, they have a similar angle to them. This angle is used in the architecture of the buildings to fit for the windows and even parts of the roof. So this has caused some issues. You can see there's a little bit of cracking in some of the wood up there and some of the bark is falling off on this side. But overall, this wood is pretty much raw and untreated. So down the line, there's probably a way that they could make this a more long-term solution. Now they're really just testing out some of the different architectural designs and opportunities that they have with the different technology at their disposal these days. They've used 3D printed concrete for the floor. These large segments are like upside down pyramids. So they're printed right side up and filled with gravel so that the next layer can be on a kind of overhang. After it's printed, the gravel's removed, thus allowing the concrete to become the primary structural support. This floor has a high thermal mass. And so when the fireplace is on, the floor gets heated up and throughout the night, even as the fire goes out, it'll continue releasing heat. The printed concrete has also been used for this fireplace, which you can kind of tell wasn't all printed in one shot. These layers here indicate where the print stopped and it was kind of stacked on top of each other. This made it easier for them to transport this unit. There's a lot of imperfections 
like here they didn't really grout the side and a lot of this print isn't perfectly smooth lines but they're really just testing out the methodology you can tell this building is extremely custom the window behind me is thinner on the right side of the sill and thicker on the left side of the sill. The door is totally custom, made out of these planks. Everything in this house was built for the purpose of this house. Because of how small the windows are, the insulatory properties of the house are stronger than if the windows were made big. This is one of my favorite 3D printed houses because of the way they pull together so many different materials into one building. And for an environmental purpose of giving the ash trees a second life, after they've been destroyed by the emerald ash beetle. This may not be a scalable utility right now, but it is demonstrating the different ways that these technologies can culminate and be brought together in a way that's more appealing than they would be by themselves. Concrete isn't the most comfortable material, so by having this wood, especially wood with a flowing natural shape, you really get a space that feels like warm, human, and comfortable. It's just a cabin, there's no toilet, there's no running water, but it's cozy, it's fairly warm, and even up here in northern New York in the winter, I'm sure with the fire going, it's even nicer. Would you be interested in having your house built by recovered lumber from an ash tree? This unique experiment by Cornell University really pushes the boundaries of the ways 3D printed concrete can be implemented with other technologies, but in its current form, it's not yet a solution to the affordable housing crisis. If you'd like to make a donation that can change the world right now, go to Habitat for Humanity and make a donation there. I'd like to give a quick shout out to my brother Logan who helped me find this cabin and also helped me with some of the footage while we were there. He also did a big portion of the editing. Logan is a mechanical engineering student graduating this month. He's taking his finals right now. He's looking for jobs in the solar industry but is interested in all different kinds of renewable energy. If you've enjoyed this video make sure to like and subscribe and maybe check out some of the other videos of my travels around North America seeing all the different 3D printed construction projects that have been going on.